What's up everybody? John back here with another video. If you don't know, I lost 200 pounds and you can too. To that end, I'm doing a series right now over on YouTube. I encourage you to go over there, follow the link and subscribe over there, watch the other videos in the series. You can also scroll down in the group that I have them all posted here as well. I wanted to get people set up as best as possible with a bunch of subtle but powerful tips to gear you up for success in the new year. One great thing about a new year is it gives us a different time scale to think about and reflect upon vis-a-vis -vis our actions. I just did a TikTok the other day about someone who's saying, I, I have 30 pounds to lose and I need to do it in six weeks. What should I do? And it's like, you've already got yourself tangled up in a whole bunch of stuff that we would need to undo before you're gonna be able to succeed at losing that 30 pounds and keeping it off. So when we think about a year, it's short enough that we can get our heads around it, but it's also long enough that we can see how, geez, what if one tiny change actually changed for good for an entire year? What would that add up to? And it's often shocking. And then you chain together four, five, six, a dozen of those tiny changes that can integrate into your life. And all of a sudden, a year from now looks like a totally different you. Hopefully a much more successful and happy you. I have certainly experienced this myself. I know it to be true. And I'm still going through these things for myself to improve upon the things that I want to improve upon and to make things easier in the next year. So what I want you to think about today is the role of impulsiveness in the next year. Most of us think about the word impulsiveness as a bad thing, right? We think of that as like a, a critique. Oh, you're too impulsive. But actually, in a lot of ways, we're not impulsive enough. We're impulsive with things that serve our survival mechanisms. We're impulsive with, you know, opening the fridge, even though we don't know why we are even in the kitchen to begin with. <laughs> now, in the last video, I talked about the right kinds of resolutions that you could make and how following these could lead you on to success with things like weight loss, even if these goals aren't ostensibly health related. And it's about reconnecting with our authentic desires that are aligned with who we really are. Using my example from yesterday, it's one thing to say, hey, I'm gonna play checkers with my kid more often. It's another thing to actually implement that. Oftentimes when we're going about behavior change, there's a lot to think about, but there are a lot of thoughts that just spring up and they're not necessary. They grab you by the lapels and shake you, trying to convince you that they're there to save your life. But the things that they're trying to protect us against aren't real. So when you inevitably go to play checkers with your kid, some voice in your head will come up with a laundry list of reasons why you shouldn't do that. And the trick is, I'm not gonna teach you how to win that argument. I'm gonna teach you how to opt out. And when I talk about weight loss being easy, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Getting in an argument with a really anxiety-ridden individual is a lot of work. It's so much easier just to walk away. But having that boundary and that ability is something that you need to practice over time. So when you're going to play checkers with your kid, it's not just that you're doing that activity. It's that you had the impulse, you see the checkerboard, you go, oh, that's fun. This would be a good time to do that. Let's just knock it out, you know, five, 10 minutes. And instead of just doing it, you start to get in this grappling match with your anxieties. Should I do it? Should I not do it? Am I being too anxious right now? Da, 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 da. And oftentimes this takes you out of the moment, out of the present, and makes it easier for you to get distracted by other things. A lot of the times the argument doesn't need to beat you over the head and get you to cry uncle and say, okay, fine, I won't play checkers. A lot of times the argument just helps prevent you from doing it. The anxiety argument in your head is just a huge distraction. And it's always a trap, it's quicksand. You never win these arguments. You never fully convince this part of your brain, that everything's fine. It's a lot like having a kid who's having a temper tantrum. You can't rationally explain to them why they should stop having the temper tantrum. I mean, you can try, <laughs> but inevitably they need to be picked up and held and feel loved and safe. And once they calm down, then you can communicate to them on the plane of reason. These things are gonna pop up though, right? Just like a kid's gonna throw a tem temper tantrum. You say, hey, I'd like to go for a walk right now. And then the voices start, right? So obviously the first step would be to be aware of these voices. Watch them. You'll learn so much just by being aware. Topic for another video. But here is where impulse is a tool in your toolkit. What if you could be distracted 
from dealing with these voices in your head and your limitations and your small story about yourself, what if you could be distracted away from that into healthful, positive activities? Activities that connect you with yourself, with those around you, with your body. And that's what impulse can do for you. Effectively, impulse is being distracted by a thought saying, hey, we could go do this and then doing it. And I'll yell from the rooftops that just do it is the worst slogan in the history of marketing. Just do it. That's the least helpful advice in the history of advice. Just do it. Just be there already. Just just have the thing already. But my main point here is that there's a, a beautiful wellspring of creativity in children also. They aren't just creatures with a giant ability to freak out over nothing. They also have very little resistance to exploding with creativity and passion and vitality and movement. Look at all the stuff that kids do without being asked to that we would call exercise. You know, they color pictures, they, they play make-believe, they try to turn upside down and look at you through their legs like they're doing yoga, you know? All these things that we would consider wellness activities. Seeing what they can do with their bodies, you know? Seeing how they can twist their arm around and Remember doing all that stuff, seeing if you could grab your hands behind your back and like turn them inside out and this, this stuff, you know? Point is, the inner child has a lot to offer you. And whether you believe you have an inner child or not, at some point you experienced being a child and that exists in you in some form. And if you'll notice that when a kid has an impulse to do something that seems fun, i.e. something that's aligned for them, they just, there's no conversation. There's no should I or shouldn't I. For a kid, should I do this thing that sounds fun? The answer is always yes. Even when other people are telling them not to do it. (laughs) So there's a huge opportunity to be more childlike in this way, in this positive, impulsive way. And you can practice it with the resolutions that we talked about in the last video. The little things that you're not doing that you like to do already. The little things that you don't really like to do that you're kind of stuck doing or habitually been doing. Not doing something can be an impulse as well. You go to reach into the fridge and you impulsively just close the fridge door. Go, no, not gonna do it. Or you start to eat a cookie and you're like, I don't wanna eat the rest of this cookie, trash can. Be impulsive. You can drive both ways on the impulse street. And if you're dealing with weight issues, you've probably been driving on one lane of that road a lot but there's another side to it and it's yours to use as well. I hope this made sense. Obviously there's a lot here and it could spiderweb out into a bunch of other topics. So I was trying to keep myself focused. But if you found this helpful, please subscribe. Please share the video. We're in a private group, so I don't know if you can share it here, but you can always copy and paste the link or send it to people who you think would benefit from it. Again, if you haven't seen the other videos in the series, check them out on YouTube or here in the group. Please subscribe over on YouTube and let me know if there's anything else on your mind that you'd love to see a video on here as we go into the new year. So any interaction you can give with the group right now is gonna be super helpful and allow group members to actually see the stuff that I'm putting out for them. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.